Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and today I'm going to show you how to use layout attributes using Polymer. Now, we showed you these a little bit a couple of videos ago, and we sort of blew right past them, right? Well, in this video, we're going to show you exactly what they're doing and how you can use them to define layouts using your HTML. So keep watching. We're going to get started now. Okay, so a couple of videos ago, we dropped in some attributes here, this full bleed layout vertical and flex. At the time, we sort of breezed over what they were doing, except for we noted that they were adding some flexbox CSS to our project without actually writing any CSS. These are what Polymer calls layout attributes. And what I should note is that these are considered an experimental feature of Polymer, and it's going to be best to check out their documentation if you are coding some Polymer projects sometime from the release of this video. So I'll include the link in the description of the video there, and you can check it out in case anything's maybe not working. That way you can make sure that you have the correct syntax if things have changed. So what are layout attributes? As the Polymer documentation describes, it's a declarative layout system built using CSS Flexbox. If you're not familiar with Flexbox, Level Up Tutorials will be doing a short little video series on Flexbox. Nothing crazy, but it's really, really super cool. Um, there's a great CSS Tricks article out it on it already if you just look for CSS Tricks Flexbox, it should give you a basic understanding of what you can accomplish with Flexbox. Really the only reason not to be going nuts over Flexbox is the browser support. But honestly, uh, in terms of creating layouts, I've never um, had a better experience with CSS than with Flexbox. So let's go over what some of these uh, attributes are sort of doing. Basically, layout is just determining that this body is going to be a container for a flex layout. It's basically saying the things inside of here are going to be able to be flexed. Um, this full bleed basically means that the body is going to take up the entire viewport. Now, vertical is going to mean that the layout that we have within the body, there would be the elements contained within it, uh, which would just be this core header panel, are going to flex vertically down. To show this off a little bit more, let's go through some basic examples. I'm going to get rid of these core icons we dropped in here last time, and I'm going to write a div here. And within this div, I'm going to have three separate divs. Okay, so let's do it a quick example, and this one comes straight from Polymer's documentation. We can say one, two, three, like this. Now let's add some styles here to make this obvious. So we can say class, example. So just using this example class, We can say that this example div has a background of, let's say, some pretty light color. We can just say it's going to be, actually this will be a darker gray, it'll be 333. And then any sort of div within the example class. So any div directly in example is going to have a background of, let's say, EEE. -E -E. Okay, just like that. Let's check out our CSS Let's check out our HTML to see what we actually have right now. I'm going to expand this a little bit. Re refresh. And it's exactly what you'd expect. We have three divs spanning full width one, two, three down here. And because we don't have any pattern or anything, uh, we're not seeing the container. So let's go ahead and add just a couple of pixels of padding. We can just say even just 10 pixels of padding all around. Cool, so now let's get into using these layout attributes. First of all, we want this div, this wrapping div, this example div, we want this to be a flex layout. So we're gonna use the layout attribute, and now we wanna determine if this is going to be horizontal or vertical. Uh, let's actually use horizontal for this particular example. Just like that. So we now have layout, horizontal, and that's all we have to have. And if we come to our page and refresh, you can see we now have our 
container div with our three divs laid out in here horizontally with no spaces between them. In fact, if we inspect, you can see these divs don't have any CSS applied to them other than this background color, but the example has this flex direction row and display flex. It's even including a couple of browser prefixes here. We have WebKit Flex and MS Flex for us. Now let's give these a little bit of space so we can just say these divs, we also want them to have a margin of let's say 10 pixels. Now when we refresh, you notice they each have a margin of 10 pixels all the way around. And uh, that gives us a little bit of space in between them. And they're still evenly spaced here. Well, let's see this flex attribute in action, right? We've seen uh, flex used up here, but let's see what happens when we throw it into this middle div. If we say flex here, uh, just using this flex attribute, it's actually gonna flex this box out to fill the remaining space. Um, if you haven't used Flexbox before, this should be pretty awesome to you because uh, it, what it means is that it, we don't have to do any calculations. In fact, if we add another div, let's just say four, it fills the space that's required. So basically one, two, three, four, take up the space that half, they have to take up and then two fills up everything else. And likewise, if we want these to appear at some sort of ratio of size, we can use the flex ratio and give all of these flex. And for example, we can say this first one is going to take up three and this last one, three is going to take up two. So now if we refresh the page, you can see they're going to be evenly distributed at a ratio of one to two to three. And you'll notice that this responds to the page width just like this. Super cool, right? And let's say what happens if we change this flex uh, layout horizontal to be vertical. So just by changing horizontal to vertical, we refresh. Now, if you notice, we have some weirdness. Well, we actually have to give the parent div a height for this example to work. Otherwise, we're gonna have just something that's totally not what we're expecting show up. So on the example div, we can give this a height of something like 300 pixels. And as you can see, uh, we can scroll down and since I'm zoomed in, this doesn't look like 300 pixels, but with the padding, it's 320. Um, so it looks like it's way bigger than that. But uh, let's actually zoom out a little bit. As you can see here, we have the same sort of ratio, one to two to three, it's just vertical. Now, what kind of other layout attributes do we have? Well, instead of illustrating all these just by typing and refreshing, I'm gonna take it straight to Polymer's documentation and we'll scroll down here and we can see that we have some other items here. Uh, so we have center, it's going to vertically center elements in a horizontal layout. Using start or end, we can position things at the top or bottom. We can come down, you can see uh, other types of ones with the hyphen justified. So we have start justified, center justified, end justified. And you can just really uh, check out all of these different ones where we can have around justified, where it makes everything totally as far separate as they can be. And, and as you can see, it just keeps on getting cooler and cooler with all of these different layout attributes. So between all of these different attributes and containers, you should be able to create some pretty cool layouts. Now there's also some general purpose ones as you can see down here, like block, hidden, relative, and fit. Uh, block makes something display block, hidden, display none, relative, position, relative. And those are your layout attributes. Now I'm still on the fence about how I feel about layout attributes. I typically like to keep my uh, styling in CSS, my layouts in CSS. However, I can definitely see how these could become super useful when used in the right way. Obviously, if you're loading up your document with all sorts of these attributes, it might not be the best solution. But then again, it's still just listed as experimental. So just like most things with Polymer, it's a lot of fun to play around with right now, but I don't know if I'd go ahead and using it on any sort of important project. So check it out, layout attributes using Polymer. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Facebook or Twitter at Level Up Tuts. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.